Welcome back, boys and girls. This Sunday, our Sunday school lesson is a doozy. I'm gonna need some help, but first, have a few announcements for you and a challenge. Let's look at our birthdays for this week. And this week, we're gonna be celebrating with Carter Ragland, woo woo, Carter, and Braylon McDowell. They all have birthdays. Uh, this week. So happy birthday to Carter and Braylon. Amen. It's always fun to celebrate birthdays, right? And our challenge this week, I want you guys to remember our pastors, not only in our own church, but in our county, in our state. They're having to make some really big decisions on what is the safest and best way for us to come together as a church and worship? So remember them in prayer this week. And let's kind of kind of put under a microscope. Let's bring into focus our own pastors, Brother Jonathan and Brother Brandon and Brother Caleb. And I want you to, to um, focus on them this week. Send them a card or a letter of appreciation and encouragement. Just tell them how much you love them, you're praying for them, and you appreciate them, okay? You can ask your mom to help you with the address and, and mail them something in the mail that they, they will receive and it will lift their spirits, okay? Now let's get into the lesson today because it's going to be fun, but it's going to be a little tricky because it's a hard lesson to understand. So I'm gonna ask you a few questions this morning. Put your thinking caps on, buckle up. Everybody, let me see you buckle. Got your thinking caps on, think you're ready. All right, listen to the first question. This is gonna stump you. How can flies land on the ceiling? Right? Have you ever thought about that? Think about it, they're virtually hanging upside down. Could you do that? We're not Spider-Man, are we? No, but these flies, they have this little sticky glue on the bottom of their pads, of their feet. It's kinda, I think it's made out of like a sugar and an oil component, and it causes them to be able to just hang out on the ceiling if they want to and be annoying while we're eating our food, right? Hey, flies are God's creatures. They have their purpose. So we have to appreciate them and be thankful for them, right? Second question, <clears throat> let's see. Tighten up the strap because you're gonna need it for your thinking cap. Here we go. How do glasses help people see? Have you ever thought about that? Well, our optometrists, those are the doctors, who take care of our eyes. They give us this special exam and they look and they see what you need uh, as far as glasses and what uh, subscription or prescription that you need that would, would help your vision. And when the light, the light's rays come into your eyes, it kind of, your glasses will bend those rays in certain directions according to your prescription that your doctor has given you and it helps you to see clearly more clear <laughs> some of us need more help than others right isn't this amazing you guys are learning so much or maybe you already knew the answers i don't know maybe you should be teaching the lesson today let's look at question number three this is a good one why is the ocean salty ever thought about that well, interestingly, interesting enough, when it rains over time, it breaks down these rocks and the elements that are found in rocks, uh, chloride, sodium, they kind of wash into, our, into the ocean and it causes the water to be salty. Amazing, amazing. God is so amazing. And our last one, you're gonna love it. Why do we have a brain freeze when we eat ice cream too quickly? Well, it all begins when the ice cream comes into our mouth. The coldness causes the blood vessels in our, in our mouths to constrict. They become tiny, which kind of cuts the blood flow to the brain. The blood can't get to the brain quick enough, 
So it causes this little feeling of ah pain for just a moment. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. So with that being said, there are lots of tough questions out there, friends. Hard questions. Sometimes we know the answers. Sometimes we don't. Sometimes we have to look for the answers. And in the life of the Bible, in the life of the Christian, we read lots of stories and, and truths in the Bible that are hard for us to, to understand sometimes. But today our story is one of those. There was a man that asked the question, how can I be born again when I'm old? That would be like Miss Michelle saying, I want to be born again. And when I think about a little bitty baby coming to the earth in a physical way through their mother's womb, how can that happen again? Well, this is not exactly what takes place in a Christian's life when they are born again, right? So this particular lesson today, after a long day of ministry, Jesus himself was spending time with his disciples and uh, they had a visitor and a man named Nicodemus came into the, and visited and, and he asked the question and he, he asked the question, how? Can I be born again? And we have to remember, Nicodemus wasn't um, your typical person in that time. He had he had special jobs. One of them was he was he was uh, what you consider a Pharisee. He was a ruler of the Jew. He was part of the Jewish government, so he had an important job. But the thing was, his teaching. He had religious teaching, but he didn't fully understand the relationship part. Kind of like us. We have a hard time understanding sometimes. We have a knowledge of God, but we don't understand the relationship that Jesus wants us to have, right? So, he was a religious leader, and he taught God's law, knowledge, knowledgeable, knowledgeably, whatever that word is, and he was a leader in, in the Jewish government. So here we are, an adult man, older in years, coming to the point where he's questioning, something's missing, what is it? And he encounters Jesus, and Jesus changes him forever, okay? So let's ask the question, and we're gonna turn in our Bibles to John 3, verse five. What did Jesus say must happen first for a person to enter the kingdom of God. Well, let's take a look. John 3, verse 5, and it says, Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Hmm, you must be born again. What does he mean by this, boys and girls? We must be born again. You know, Nicodemus needed a new life. He needed a new life and an eternal life. That means one that never perishes. You never die. And that's the promise that we have from, from God that when we believe upon Jesus, that he came to earth and died for our sin and, and he rose from the dead and he's gone to heaven to be with God to prepare a place for us. When we believe this truth, this is our new life for us. We, our bodies might be die in this world but our our spirit goes on to live with God eternally forever and ever it's we're born again into the presence of God eternally right that's a big hard concept to understand I know and eternal life is it's a gift and it, it only comes from God we cannot earn it we cannot try to be as as good as we could be is never going to get us into heaven. We cannot earn our way to heaven. It's only through Jesus. It's only by becoming born again. When we lay our old life aside and we take on the nature of God, we love God with all of our heart, soul, mind. Remember our verse a couple of weeks ago? And strength. And we love God. Uh, our neighbor as ourself. God showed his love by sending Jesus into the world to make a way for us to come to him. 
That's part of being born again, if we accept that and believe that. The salvation is found in no other way, friends. No other way. Can't buy our way. Can't earn our way. Only through Jesus. And we have to remember that. Jesus did the work for us. He did the work on the cross so that this could happen for us. So that we could be a new creature in, in Christ and through Christ. You know, <clears throat> we rejoice because we know this truth and we share it with others and we pray that they come to know the Lord like, like we do. And this is a hard, hard concept. I know being born again. What does that look like? So today, as you as you've listened to the story, and maybe you have questions already, like I really don't know what Miss Michelle is talking about. Sit down with mom and dad, and you guys read over this lesson together. Talk about it. Uh, ask questions, and if if your parents have questions as well. Hey, we're learning together. Every day we learn something new about the Lord. And you can call Brother Jonathan and ask questions. And I know if he doesn't know the answer, he will search it out for you. I know. And there are many others. We're all in this together. We're learning together. All right? Thank you so much for being such a good listener today. Now, don't forget to spend time learning John 3.16. That's our verse we're focusing on. Some of you know it very well. Some of you are still working on it. Maybe you want to take that verse, turn it into a song. Maybe you want to take it and just write it. A lot of times, I know for me, if I take a verse and I rewrite it over and over and over, it helps me to learn it. Because sometimes just saying it out loud, for God so loved the world, he gave his only son, and whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. If I say it over and over and over, sometimes that's a way people learn. But for me, I like writing it. I can write it down many, many times and maybe put it on a sticky note and put it on my mirror in my bathroom or maybe next to my bed on the nightstand so that I see it a lot. It helps me to remember. So John 3.16 is our verse. Thank you for our time together this morning. And... Don't forget your letters of encouragement for our pastors. And again, happy birthday, Carter and Braylon. I love you all so much and hope to see you soon. Let's pray. God, we, we pray that when there's times we don't understand your writings and your word, Lord, you'd give us wisdom. We pray that we can be the kind of Christian that trusts you in all things. We love you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great week, and I'll see you next week.